So hello, I'm Andras, and uh, last year I was here on the SDRA talking about Open Web RX, which is uh, an SDR server application. It allows uh, multiple users to connect to a server that has an SDR hardware attached, and uh, uh, we have a web, web user interface. Uh, they can listen to different signals. So uh, for those who don't know yet, uh, it looks like this. Um, it should play, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> okay. Oops. Oh, I don't like this. It doesn't want to play my video. Um, I'm sorry. But I will do so. Let's get back to it. Okay, I have I have screenshots about it later. It's, uh, it's very sad that it doesn't play. Okay, so actually I've been working on, uh, or I've, been, I've uh, promised to work on several things uh, at the last SDRA, and uh, I managed to work on all of them. So uh, the first thing uh, that has happened that uh, the audio is now streamed in compressed form and also the waterfall. Uh, so that uh, uh, now the network bandwidth usage is much uh, lower. Now uh, it's even feasible to use open box behind the uh, um, OME DSL connection. Okay, um, I also managed to um, finish the website that lists the publicly available receivers. Uh, that's how it looks like. Uh, there are about uh, 20 to 30 uh, receivers online, usually <coughs> at uh, several places in the world, and um, you can register your own if you want to. Um, the third thing that was um, uh, actually more tricky is the DSP acceleration. So it's uh, just like any other SDR software, uh, the uh, so DSP processing or the speed of uh, DSP processing is important, uh, but here uh, we have multiple users to serve, so that uh, uh, it's even more important if we uh, want to use it uh, from Raspberry Pi or so. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, I, I didn't mention yet uh, the DSP library and uh, the DSP command line tool that I use uh, behind open barrels is called CSDR and it works like this. So if, uh, just in a nutshell, here, here we have uh, an RTL SDR as an IQ source. Uh, so we enter this in the command line, then uh, we can uh, use the CSDR command to do format conversion. Then uh, we can shift the signal of interest into the center uh, do decimation and uh, demodulation and all uh, so all other things that are required to uh, get a working uh, FM receiver. Okay, and uh, here the tricky part is the digital down converter because it works on the uh, on the high sampling rate signal, so the original IQ signal that the SDR hardware uh, emits. Okay, and. Uh, so what is this uh, digital down converter? Um, so it does this. First, it, uh, it shifts this signal of interest into the sender, then uh, runs a channel filter and uh, does decimation. Then we have only one channel selected from the original IQ signal. And uh, these are the CSDR comments that uh, do these operations. And that's the one that uh, actually takes the most CPU time. So I worked a lot on this. Um, luckily, we have uh, multiple ways to select one channel uh, out of the IQ signal. Uh, the first way is calculating the convolution uh, directly to run the uh, finite impulse response filter. And, uh, the other way is uh, just like uh, Phil has uh, already been talking about, is uh, processing in the frequency domain uh, 
and uh, I already I, I wasn't made an implementation on that, but mine is uh, running on the CPU. The HPSDR developers uh, did this for the GPU, and uh, that's what they call DFC. Uh, okay, so the four boxes uh, at the lower part of the screen are the Im different implementations I made. And uh, the first two are in the, on the master branch of CSDR, which means that these are, uh, these are actually uh, in Opama Barracks now. So uh, the other two are, uh, are, are also on GitHub and are also operational, but uh, I need to write some more interfaces uh, to get them into Opama Barracks. So the first implementation is this. Now the simple C version looks like this. Uh, just uh, to uh, visualize what it does, it does this. So it's a decimating fear further. And uh, this is the approximate number of steps the required to take uh, this operation. And uh, the, there, we have another way to do this a bit faster. Uh, if we use the, if we use the, uh, so the single instruction multiple data uh, instruction set extensions in, this, in some CPUs, like uh, in Neon in ARM SOCs, and uh, this one allows us to uh, work on uh, multiple samples uh, at a time. So just to visualize, uh, we have an instruction in CPU to load four taps uh, in one operation, and uh, we can load other four samples in one operation uh, here, floating point, and we can uh, we can add them, or we can uh, multiply them one by one and add them up. Okay, and uh, these are just one operation for the I and one operation for the Q. Uh, okay, so this makes a bit faster, so it makes the thing speed faster. Uh, in, uh, in practice, it's about uh, three times speed up. Okay, uh, the theoretical was four. And uh, I also made the GPGPU implementation for that. So here you can see a, a CUDA kernel that runs on an NVIDIA card. <coughs> and uh, a GPU is, uh, so it's it's uh, kind of it's similar to uh, a CPU with many cores, but all the cores had a lot of memory bandwidth, and uh, but they are uh, they are not the general purpose. So it's just uh, I'm just oversimplifying things, but uh, I I want to uh, make them understandable. So GPU can do this uh, at the same time, and. Uh, we can get an 18 times of, times of speed up with this. <coughs> and the four method I implemented uh, was based on uh, Mark Borgerding's paper. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a great paper. I, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the one similar to the DFC. And uh, yeah, I could call this branch and git. <laughs> for open barracks in DDC with multiple mixing them, sampling filter bank from the title of the paper, but I'd rather just call it fast DDC, which is uh, actually uh, not the name of the algorithm, but it's how I call it. And uh, okay, so we're here. Uh, so what, what it does, uh, Phil has already uh, showed slides on that, so I just, uh, I just uh, go fast, I think. So first we have the time domain signal, we cut it up into overlapping blocks. Um, then we run FFT on block to turn it into the frequency domain. We have signal of interest, in, interest on there. Uh, we can move that signal into the center by just rotating the means. And then uh, we can run the filter by uh, multiplying this uh, one by, uh, in pairs, which is, uh, in fact, uh, much cheaper than doing the convolution. So uh, that's why it's uh, good to do this in the frequency domain. And uh, then we can uh, do the decimation 
um, and just uh, inverse free transform. Then we get a block of time domain signal because we use the overlap and save method. We can now discard some samples from the beginning and we can concatenate parts of the time domain signal. And uh, okay, uh, the other thing is that uh, when we shift the uh, signal, when we do the frequency translation in the frequency domain, uh, then the accuracy is limited by the number of FFT bins. So it's a problem. And thus we have to do another shift on the decimated signal in the time domain. Uh, it's not that, not that big problem because <coughs> the time domain signal is uh, uh, over here is, is low sampling rate. And uh, I implemented the algorithm in a way that uh, here I can discard some more samples. And now we have that one channel selected. And why is this, uh, why is this good? Is that uh, the first part of the algorithm is common for all the channels. So uh, that means that we can do this. Uh, in fact, these are the CSDR comments that uh, you can try or that are in the fast DDC branch already. And uh, this means that if we have only, uh, if we have only one channel, then we don't have much improvement. Uh, so here you can see the CPU usage and uh, on the other axis is the channels down converted in parallel. And uh, if, uh, if we have seven channels uh, in parallel, then it, it gives a lot of improvement, about three times. Uh, if, we have, uh, if you use other parameters like the FFT size is different or the decimation factor is different, then we might not get that much improvement. So it is the, between, the difference between the two graphs is just the parameters <coughs> that I used when I made them. And uh, okay, I also worked on various other things. I still have some, uh, some minutes, okay. Uh, I, I managed to get uh, some radio teletype decoded with CSDR and uh, I, I hope I can introduce the uh, digital modes into the OpenWorks web UI soon. Other thing is uh, I, I really like to say thanks uh, to some people who uh, allowed me to play with their SDR hardware so that uh, we could make OpenWorks uh, working with uh, different SDR hardware. <coughs> and a special thanks to Mike Osman and uh, Alex for the 5 lv uh, to, for donating me some hardware to play with. And uh, I also know that there is a, an HPSDR forum today in the other room. So I and my friend Janos, AJ5FT, have decided that uh, uh, we would get HPSDR working with OpenRx. So I've written a tool, <coughs> a Python tool that can uh, read the IQ samples from a Metis uh, or we, we had a, a Mercury, Metis, and Atlas uh, boards and, and uh, made a receiver out of that. And uh, so uh, this tool is also <coughs> on GitHub now. It can be used to interface OpenWebRx with an HPSDR. And here are some screenshots about what, what I was talking about. <laughs> so this is how OpenWebRx looks like, and this is how uh, OpenWebRx works with HPSDR. So yes, yeah, it's, it's a web receiver. Um, okay. This is another screenshot. We have some radio teletype and SSB and things like that. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, so this is the where you can find this tool. Um, the last thing I'm, I want to talk about is uh, Qt CSDR. So yeah, it's a Qt UI for CSDR, but uh, very short. Uh, uh, some of you may know that uh, in some people have uh, found out how to transmit um, a radio frequency signal on some of the GPO, GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi, and uh, there was a tool called Pi FM that could generate the wideband FM signal, and uh, some other people have uh, created great tools to transmit whisper or uh, transmit uh, an IQ signal uh, via 
GPIO pin. Uh, the latter is called RPITX by F5OEO. And uh, you also need to use some kind of filter on the, uh, on the signal uh, output on the GPIO pin because it has some harmonics. My, my friend AJ7DCD has uh, created a board sold by Tupper that can filter uh, these harmonics out and surplus them. It's called QRPI. So putting these things together, I decided to make a UI software that can turn RTLSDR and RPITX into a, a transceiver. So if you have a Raspberry Pi and uh, you also have a QRPI shield, an RTLSDR and then a USB audio device, it can, it can receive via the RTLSDR and transmit uh, using the uh, RPITX and QRPI shield. <coughs> and uh, okay, it's also on GitHub. Uh, it's quite short, a few hundred lines, so uh, someone can modify it if once. Okay, so uh, these are the things I wanted to talk about. Thank you very much. And uh, okay, uh, I'm I'm just waiting for the questions now, and I'm trying to get that video working. Maybe uh, why you can ask. Um, so with the FFT-based down conversion approach, you mentioned that you have some overlap in the FFT. Um, what is the right amount of overlap, or what defines this parameter? Um, the, so that is uh, written in paper uh, in detail, but uh, uh, as far as I remember, the number of taps uh, is, uh, is related to it. So. Uh, just uh, look at the thing in the paper. I I don't remember the, that much implementation details. Actually, actually I, I could answer you. Okay, you have a, a block size. Okay, and uh, you add uh, to the block size uh, the the length of the uh, impulse re response minus one. And 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 uh, and this is the the FFT size, and the length of the impulse response minus one is the overlap size. Okay, that was the video. Oh, so it looks like this if it will load. Okay, so that is that's it. So it's a web receiver. You can click on a signal and uh, listen to it. You can see like different modulations change the field of bandwidth, so this is what it's all about. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? So, um, <clears throat> uh, you, you developed the whole uh, accelerated first yourself, which, which is really awesome. Um, I just wanted to point out that the GNU Radio project does have a spin-off called the Volk, Vector optimized library of kernels um, that you might want to look into because they have for things like filters, that's all kind of, of uh, SIMD primitives, they have implementations for neon and SSE and stuff. So maybe you can copy paste or just use the library if you want to power this to something else or need some more accelerated functionality. No, it doesn't support OpenCL because uh, OpenCL isn't like really something that fits into that concept to Elmet. Okay, thanks. Any, any more questions? Any more questions? So then, Anders, thank you very much. Applause to Anders Hetzler. Thank you.